What's up? How y'all doing? It's Jared. What's up, Boker Plus Bally Song Trainer? Boker made a Bally Song a little while ago. They actually discontinued it. I thought they had still been making it, but they're not. They discontinued it, and it was excellent looking. I really like the way that it looked. You can see this is number 72. It's got 420 on it. I believe that's actually the steel. I'm thinking it's 420 stainless steel. But they discontinued the Bally Song a while ago, and they haven't been they haven't had anything and this actually hits a point in the market that i think is excellent because this is around it's about 48 bucks you're going to pay for it online it's got an msrp of about 70 dollars, and it's excellent it's a nice knife i'm definitely impressed with the way this thing is constructed the way that it feels it is very smooth out of box you can see that there that side's running a little bit more smooth than my bite handle is but i tightened up the screws i might need to loosen them a little bit you do want to lock tight it directly out of the box because i was sitting on bark right it's the bay area rapid transit it's the train system like subway system that runs through the san francisco bay area and i'm flipping this knife and i decide oh i'm going to test out the latch right and I popped it into the open position like this. And you can see the way that this latch here is shaped. It's very 51-ish reminiscent, you know, morpho reminiscent. But it's got this very heavy dip shape, right? And so it actually forces itself in between the scales. And that screw popped out and landed probably two foot from the third rail. And so I was just screwed i couldn't get oh and i could see it i mean i was standing 12 foot away from it but i watched it bounce and it was gone so you probably do want to tighten these screws out of the box that may be a little bit of a concern but the way this thing is constructed is very very much like a 51 the way the actual latch operates here it doesn't quite work as well i'm gonna i'll get into that but if you can see here it's got a little hook right and so in the open engagement right when the actual knife I, no, trainer or whatever it is is actually open the spring latch doesn't hold because if you're familiar with the way that the 51 chris the valley guy sent me this pouch this is my flipping pouch i've got my tachyon the 87 and 51 so it's my most flipped knives so i'll just grab that pouch when i want to flip but when this the knife is actually in the open position it locks itself open so when you depress the handles see i'm squeezing these handles there and the lock isn't disengaging and it's because it's running on this little nub it's got a little nub that flips around that bar you can see the way that that works there it flips around that bar and holds itself in position this here probably due to patent rules or something like that just design infringement doesn't actually do that so when the latch is in this is the open position here when it's actually in the open position you can see that it's just got another little hook it's just a dual hook system so like the 51's got a, a hook and a a dip so that it actually stays open this one doesn't do that it does operate just like a spring latch in either direction and with that the stainless steel it does work okay this latch does work it keeps out of the way but it's just too easy to deactivate in comparison to the 51 it is very light watches <laughs> i don't even have to squeeze these handles together and that latch will detach and the reason for that i believe is the stainless steel you know the stainless steel liner is opposed to the titanium and the 51 design and so there's a lot more tension on this spring the spring is a lot harder to actually manipulate in use than what would be on the 51 and so it doesn't it's not quite as user friendly but it does work and it actually you know it's there i definitely like it good design the pocket clip the pocket clip is a positive and a negative, honestly, because the way it's shaped is nice. I like the length of it. It's very short in profile, but it hooks because these holes here, the way that they've actually milled these pattern, this pattern, which actually goes through the steel liners as well, which is nice, is very sharp. That's a very sharp 90 degree edge there. They've done no milling. There's no radius whatsoever on there. And so it actually... It could be a positive or a negative in the actual flipping. You may like that, you might not, because there's a whole lot of bite in actual when I'm in manipulation and I can feel those edges when I actually roll this through my hand. But what that leads to with the pocket clip is when I slide this into material, 
that ridge right there underneath the pocket clip snags onto my pants. It snags onto whatever it is. So actually retracting this thing out of the pocket is very difficult. It's easy to get into the pocket, but this is an extremely secure pocket clip. So, if, I mean, that's, it's, again, that's, you know, it's kind of a positive because you really don't, you're really not going to have this knife pop out of your pocket unwillingly you know it's probably just not gonna happen because yeah yeah it it's hard to get out but at the same time that's gonna rip up your pocket it is gonna destroy your pocket a little bit more so I mean it's not it's not great but it is cool I like the color it's a very orangish red it is red but it's almost on orange and I don't know if you can make a cross let me see if I can find some scratches you can see the little scratches and dings and dense in here. These healed up a lot quicker than normal G10. When you scratch G10, it gives a very, I'll just do this for demonstration purposes. All right, but you get a very light scratch. You can actually see it, it's very noticeable. But when you rub it, when you move it around, you get all the oils and greases from your hand to fill the hole and all the oils and everything that actually goes into the G10. You can see that there, it just kind of heals itself up. And this color, whatever this G10 is, which I imagine isn't the highest quality G10, honestly. And that's the reason that it, it's not as hard, and so that's probably why it does that so quick. But I've dropped this thing and beat it up quite a bit, and you can barely tell. I mean, there's a scratch there. There's a couple on it, you know, at the back end, but it definitely holds up well. It flips very nicely. The balance... Maybe. I can actually do this. The balance point is a little bit further out than the 51, but it's it's right about the same. It's a strange angle here that I'm holding this at. That'll be my excuse, right? It's not the fact that I suck at doing this. You can see the balance point is about right there. Level it out. So it's it is per, it's pretty neutral. Bring up my flytanium. That's a bad example. 63. See so the 63 balances just a little bit further forward than this one here does. And so it does have a relatively neutral balance point for the size of knife that it is. It's got a blade length of, well, pseudo blade of 4 inches, handle length of 5 inches. It's 4.8 ounces. So it's right in there, you know, right in that 4 to 5 ounce range. It's on the heavier side and the, the weights in the back definitely give a lot of weight. I noticed that this thing, it has more weight in the back end when I'm moving it around than a, than a few of my other knives do. So that it's definitely a more neutral, more neutral feeling flipper. The weight really does feel to be right in the middle and it's, it's good. I definitely am a big fan of this. The way that they've crowned the spine or yeah, crowned the entire edge of the blade here. You can see that it's really radiused off the whole way around. And that carries around all the way around the horns. And then it's kind of stops. They've just done a little bit of the grinding on the actual blade. And it's just enough to make it comfortable. They haven't crowned the blade the way that they did the horns and the tang area here. Which is just really nice. That's a nice touch. Yeah, this thing is excellent for 50 bucks. I think they did a really good job. It's replacing my Bear Ops B400 that I've needed to replace for a while. There's a size comparison there. A little bit shorter. Bring it up next to the Tachyon. A little bit shorter. So it is that 51 6X series, you know, 5X series length. Right in that range. It doesn't look like it though, does it? When you look at it, it just looks kind of shorter. If you're curious about this, one of the things I was curious about, because the, the backspaces here are very reminiscent as well. They look very similar, but they're they're not. This is it's a much larger backspacer which I think contributes to that weighty feeling as well as the steel liners opposed to the titanium you can see that 
I do like the latch. It doesn't work quite as well. You can see that there. And there's no real way to get it down into the dip. It just hangs on the side there. It's chamfered instead of rounded. That's a Boker. Ballysong Trainer. Y'all have a good one.